Good evening, all of you. Uh, we are going to talk today about the management for a top level goal. And the question is how to deal with the equestrian circuit to read the high level competition goal. What does that mean? Every year, you should have a championship to prepare. And it's no more to know exactly how to deal for the different circuits you can attend to make sure that your horse could be ready for a selection and also to make um, your professional uh, aspect in a good way. It's necessary to remember that the high level rider is both athlete and business leader. Uh, when we start the, as junior young riders, we dream to reach the top level, but the reality is that you need to manage your own stables, your own company with, um, with business, with staff, with suppliers, with customers, and um, all the organization around the life of a top level rider. And also, you know how to deal with uh, your image. It's very important to find sponsors, to know how to, to discuss with media, uh, fan community, and all of this uh, knowledge of communication platforms. We have now two examples. I have the privilege to manage for the uh, Rio Olympic Games 2016 with two totally different uh, um, background before. The first horse I call X, win the Grand Prix World Cup in Bordeaux, and all the rest of the preparation was focused for Rio uh, August 2016. The second one I call uh, U, returns from injuries, and restart outdoor shows beginning of the year on very, very low level, 1 million weight 20, and uh, could be able uh, to reach a level five star CSIO just as individual in May. And uh, in the presentation, we also uh, mentioned the overall vision of the circuits and championships in 2016 and the annual analysis of 11 horses from different nations, from different riders, because for me it's interesting to see the average of competition they are doing and the average of show they are attending. And uh, at the end we will see the, the global vision over eight years to all championships uh, in different regions. Now we come on the first one, the horse X. He was the winner, as I mentioned, in Bordeaux CSI uh, World Cup. And at that time, we were 28 weeks prior to the Olympic Games. Then we had decided to give him a long rest but the rest doesn't mean staying in the stables, not at all. The rest means concerning that horse is living uh, close by the seaside. So he went every two days more or less to the beach and he had maintenance training session. In yellow, you have the competition, sorry. In blue, dark blue, uh, the, the, the training, maintenance training. And in the green, are the training, uh, specific training with, uh, with specific uh, issues to, to, to face and a specific kind of training with combination or whatever, okay? Then we started in a two-star show uh, with only two classes, one meter 35, just to come back in a nice way with no efforts, no boots, nothing special, just to train inside a competition. Then 
two weeks with her maintenance training, nothing special. And then we went to uh, Antwerp for a global champions tour uh, show. And he jumped one class plus the Grand Prix, one meter 62 rounds. And he was seventh with a one down, uh, with zero and one down in uh, jump off. Then we had three weeks for a ball, which was very important because uh, he was part of the team. That means he had two uh, rounds in a row to jump. So to prepare a ball, we made a special training on grass to prepare a ball. And then he did one class the first day on, th on Thursday. And the day after it was the Nations Cup and he had a score of two uh, fourth, one fourth in uh, each, uh, each round. Then two weeks later, he was supposed to go to Rome. And he has also the same program with one class as a warm up the first day, the Nations Cup, a bit better with a clear round in the first round and one down in the second one and no Grand Prix. No Grand Prix because we were considering the horse was 15 years old and uh, we were really paying attention to his uh, health, the legs. It was not fragile, but you know, we, we had this in mind to, to, to take care and not asking everything before the main event. Then we were minus 12 weeks and we, we gave a rest, uh, continuing to go to the, to the sea, walking is good for the legs. And we planned two training sessions to prepare Rotterdam, which was the last big uh, CSIO to make the selection. It was the last big competition to go or not going, but to be part of the team, it was the aim from Philippe Gerda to jump Nations Cup and Grand Prix in that show. That's what we did with a warm up the first day, the Nations Cup again, one, one, uh, one fourth and one fourth, and the Grand Prix zero and four. You could uh, see easily that the, the results are not brilliant, but because of the Kevin uh, statutes, uh, because I, I give you his name, Philip uh, Gerda decided to to take him in the in, in the in the team. But for Kevin, it was difficult because for him, uh, the fact not having good results, consistent results, made him a bit uh, stressful. And for me. Uh, it was uh, special because uh, it was new for me to, to start with Kevin. I started in December, in November, 2015. And I didn't know that horse very well. And I said, okay, it's not really performant today, but we have to continue our preparation for Rio. And that's why we gave a long rest, two weeks, and we made a strong training session before going to Knocker only a street star, just to continue the training in a situation of competition. And here he did three class. One meter 40 the first day with one clear round, one meter 45 the second day with one clear round, and the Grand Prix, clear round again, but no jump off. We consider that he was ready. We consider that, of course, a three stars was easier than a five stars. But the feeling was good. We have changed some um, details like the, the bit, the length of the spurs, and some details on the position, etc., etc. And Kevin in Knocker was very positive, had a very good feeling, and felt his horse ready. That's why we just had the training session with, uh, you know, with uh, Philippe Garda just before leaving. He, as many countries are doing, he organized a, a clinic with all the riders and the trainers. And we, we did two light, very training sessions, very light training sessions, because we consider that it was necessary to change anything 
and the, the, the main thing was to keep the horse fit and uh, happy to jump. And then we had the, the, the travel, the flight. We arrived more or less one week before the competition start for the uh, jumping. And then the horse was clear on uh, all the day for the team competition. So uh, if you have some questions, uh, we could come back on that or if you want. The second one was riding by Philippe Rosier and uh, came from an injury. Uh, he got injured in October uh, 2015, something like this. And he came back after a long re-education period. He came back on a one-star show, one-star show in Villamoura in cannes sur mer And I started to, to train Philippe, to train with Philippe at that period. He asked me and his owner as well uh, to come on the picture to help them. But to be honest, I accepted, but I said, okay, we, we don't talk about the games, please, because we are 20 weeks before, and honestly, I can't see how we could reach the game starting by a one-star level competition at the beginning. And after that, we went to Amber, you know, the two stars, where he jumped two classes, one meter 35, one meter 45. And in a way, we all thought to come in the, in the train, we should be able, we must be able to get ready for La Ball. That's why we planned Le Touquet, which is a, a three-star show on grass. And we organized some training session light at the beginning and more consistent afterwards. And in Le Touquet, the, the horse was quite good, but two, two fourths in the Grand Prix. But quite good to, to jump the week after to La Ball. And in La Ball, it was really, really interesting to see the improvement he has done. He has made one fourth in the Grand Prix, plus two other classes. And in the Grand Prix, it made a stupid fault because Philippe uh, tried to remove his helmet before the last jump, and he made a fault on that jump. Otherwise, he was clear around. And after that, we had a long discussion with the owners and Philippe Gavard. And we decided together to go to Rome to continue on that level and to reinforce the horse also and to to re uh, start to jump bigger to see if the horse was solid enough and consistent enough. And again, he has made three classes, including the Grand Prix with two faults. So it was not perfect, but it was, it was there. It was there and quite consistent. And the week after, it was directly on the way back, he stopped to saint tropez And that was, you know, the, the click to, to think that the horse could be ready. And in the Grand Prix, it was clear round, and he had one down in the jump off for a ninth place. But can you imagine, we are at that time 11 weeks before the games. So it was honestly difficult to believe that it was possible to read the team. But anyway, we have decided together to jump a knocker, five star show. And it was the same weekend at Paris, but Philippe and I had a long discussion concerning that. And we decided to go to Knocker, far from the discussions, the rumors, and all the blah, blah, blah concerning the, the period before the selection. And <laughs> thanks God, he finished second in the Grand Prix. And as you, <laughs> you uh, maybe know, uh, many times during a, a selection process, we have new injuries, we have horses who are not so fit, etc., etc. That's why Philippe Gerda asked Philippe Rosier to be part of the team in Aachen, because since the beginning of the year, 
it didn't make it didn't make any nations go and finally we went to Aachen but the selection was made the day before the competitions start so we knew that Philippe was fifth uh, to uh, for Rio and we had also a discussion between us to um, and I said to him please stay positive accept this fifth place because for the moment we are not sure at all to be ready and we never know we know that 30 percent of the fifth riders in a team come inside the ring it's important to know that for you as young competitors because if you take that in a bad mood maybe sometimes you give up before starting but imagine if you have to come inside the ring because one of your colleagues is out, you need to get ready. That's why as long as the first starter is not in the ring for the main event, stay focused. So I can, in jump 1 meter 45, Nations Cup, one quarter number one in the first one, clear round in the second round. So after the Nations Cup, Philippe Gerda considered that it was okay and we should stop like this. But between Philippe and I, we thought that the horse was not ready. And Philippe either, because he didn't jump that big classes since a while. And we decided a bit against Philippe Gerda to jump the Grand Prix. And unfortunately, as you can see on the slide, he had four faults plus one time fault. But of course, uh, the staff was not very happy, but honestly, we considered, Philip and I, that it was important for us to see the horse again jumping that level. And after studying the, the video and discussing and discussing, we, we have decided to not to change a lot because it was too late, obviously. It was too late, but just to make some simple exercises on cavality, some different pattern, just for the control, just for the locomotion, just for details like this. And then we went with the others to the final training session with Philippe Garda. I managed a session with two different courses with water jump, it was not a high top jumper of water, plus some different uh, lines, uh, S, curves etc but nothing big for for not taking any risk to make the poor the horse care because of a too big course or too big fences and then after the 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 flight to rio during the the, the week before we just make again some cavalry sessions and the warm-up and then he was as you know, very consistent for the competition itself. Uh, I mentioned those two cases because I know that perfectly, but I also have the same diagram for all the horses I manage for different countries like Brazil or France when I was French team manager. It's very important, for my opinion, with 40 years of experience, to to write it down on a notebook to know exactly your season. Now it's possible with the computers, we know exactly, but it's important to know. And if we compare now with um, different riders, we will see after. For the moment, I put on that slide the, the season from January to December. In fact, we have the, we start as a series or championship, the World Cup series, which is a world championship, annual jump, uh, world championship uh, indoor. The competition in Europe, the selection process is starting in October and the final is in March. Then you have the Nations Cup circuit, which is starting in May and the final is in September in Barcelona. Then you have the Global Champions Tour. All the three, um, the, the annual championship is more or less in August. Sometimes it, it's in July, but more, most of the time it's in August. And all the three uh, circuits 
are owned by the FEI. And then you have some private uh, series with the global, you all know the global, with more or less 20, uh, next 18 series with a final now in November in Prague. You have the Longines Masters with uh, three cities, uh, Hong Kong, uh, New York, and Paris. The Rolex Grand Slam, only three on my slide, but now we have a Sertogen Bosch. But in July, you have um, uh, Ex uh, Aachen, Ex La Chapelle in French, sorry. Uh, September, it's uh, Calgary. And now in November, we have uh, uh, Sertogen Bosch and uh, Genève in December. And you have all of the CSI five star. I don't consider the three star and two star which are so important to develop the horses obviously and if i make in addition on the last line you have a total of many many uh, five star shows i know we all know that for young riders as long as you are not part of a team for the long for the global for example as u25 or if you are not on the first 30 of the ranking list it's difficult to reach a five-star show, but the the advantage is that you have more places free for the nation's cup, and uh, uh, we can see that uh, it's a good opportunity for the chef de cap selectioners to uh, give you uh, places to join teams in nation's cup, which are all for the super league five stars level. Now I come back about my high level horses. You have on the yellow the number of competition they did in 2015, and in a, um, purple the number of classes they did. And we can see like this El Santos, Classic, Ryan, Wire, Simon, Conrad, and everything you can you can see by yourself. The one who has made the most is classic riding by Simon de l'Est. But it's interesting to see the other one, uh, Ryan, also riding by Simon, has made 12, and uh, the other one, 18. Hello, Sanctus, who was the richest horse that year because he won the Grand Slam, has made 16 with uh, 38 classes. And like this, you can compare uh, the, these all 11 examples. I don't know which is the best. I don't have an uh, opinion. And my opinion is not important. The important point is to see the picture and to make your own analyze with your own horses. And like this, you can compare. But you have a good idea because this is the reality. Now we make a stop on the calendar, which is all the time the same. We, we, we talk about the Olympiad, which is a four year slot. And when you come from an Olympiad, like a Rio, for example, we have a European Championship. It was in Gothenburg the last time. And this championship is not part of the qualifying system of the next Olympic Games. The qualification system starts on the WEG. And considering the, how that case, it was in Tryon. And then and in the WEG, the five best teams are still qualified for the Games. And then you have the European, Pan American Games, regional games which are uh, qualifications and very important qualifications because uh, as you know today we have uh, 15 teams no 20 with the new system because we had more more flags and all the others none already qualify have their own uh, championship uh, to do so and uh, that's the last way to get qualified as a team for the Olympic Games. 
And then we repeat again, European, but non qualifying system, etc., etc. And it's important as a young rider to, to know how to deal with this uh, system. It's also a uh, good, um, when you think about the, the age of the horse you purchase, you can look forward if you could get ready for the next one, for example. Now, what do you have to do? That's what I said. You have to define the targets. Is it a target for one year, two years, or four years? And then you have to, to know how you proceed to have a chance to reach this target. It means organization, it means the work to deliver, to improve, to be part of the team, etc. etc. That's why it's very important to make your self-evaluation all the time to know if you are in or out. It's a waste of time, of money and of confidence to be part of top-level competition if you are not successful. So it's important to make that evaluation, not going for, forward without any analysis. And for my opinion, it's also important to know how to surround yourself with external skills. For example, coach, physical trainer, mental trainer, media trainer, etc. Because, you know, as I said at the beginning of this presentation, to be a top level competitor today, not only in equestrian sports, in all sports, it's necessary to have people around who help you to be able to deliver things you have to deliver, like an interview or, or discussions with sponsors, etc., etc., and having enough time and enough dedication to train yourself and your horses. So it's an important point to, um, to develop and to think about. And it's also important to think and to meditate. What means being a top level sportsman or sport girl? It's first having the chance to live your passion 100%. It's also becoming an ambassador for your country. When you carry on your national flag, when you are listening your national anthem, you are an ambassador. It means rights, but duties. Of course, make your sport, your life, your job, <laughs> is willing to win. But it's also knowing how to lose and learning from, from it. Because I know some riders, when they lose, they, they, they lose also the confidence. And it's, uh, it's a big problem. So it's important to know that the, the defeat, the failures, are part of the top sport. It's an exciting lifestyle, which makes living your passion but it's requiring a total investment and that include to make sacrifice renunciations with family friends leisure holidays because uh, as you know uh, the top sport is a permanent circuit so it's important to know that it doesn't mean you have to uh, renounce to everything you, you, that doesn't mean that you can't have a family life but that means we need to be aware of the sacrifice and of the real life, the life that um, gives to you. And also the sport, it's in a way it's putting you, you in a certain danger because riding is a danger sport if you don't pay attention. And also the danger of failures. It's not that easy, but for sure, if you are a part of the Young Riders Academy, it's because you are still at, at a good top level, uh, considering your age. But if you continue, 
you will be um, a part of the top level seniors. The one you are, uh, you have uh, the pictures and, uh, and posters on your room, you are trying to beat them. And it's uh, that's the way it is. And also, of course, uh, making top level confusion means living under pressure. But as you can train your uh, physical skills or your technique, it's also possible to train how to become stronger under pressure. That's the presentation of today, and I hope it will be a good help for you. And hopefully we will supposed to meet in competition. So don't hesitate to come to me if I can help you. I will be there with pleasure. Thank you very much for your attention.